What's up guys, Patrick here, tour guide and your guide to Barcelona. And we're here in the neighborhood of Gracia. I'm gonna to try to bring a little bit more of Barcelona to you today. We're gonna to walk around and try to see some of the plazas of this amazing neighborhood. Starting off right here in the Plaza Rovira y Trias. And you can see behind me, there's a statue of the man architect here in Barcelona who made the original plans of the Eixample, that new area in Barcelona. And this plaza dedicated to him is one of the best in the neighborhood of Gracia. So we're going to go around some of the back streets. I'll show you around a little bit, see what's going on here, and also get into some of the main plazas. Let's get going. You can see around all the different bars. You've got the statue right there. Don't want to get too close because there's a couple ladies enjoying a drink right next to him. But I'll put something up for you to see right here. And we're going to get into some of the different plazas, the different streets in the Gracia neighborhood, which is a little bit different from maybe some of the other neighborhoods you might visit if you're here in Barcelona, more of that Gothic quarter, all of that old city. Gracia was actually a completely different city for many, many years. And it wasn't until 1897 that it was incorporated into part of Barcelona. As they started to grow out of the walls, Barcelona expanded out to the Eixample. And that's actually the original plans for the Eixample before a different architect, Cerda, took over, were made by Rovira y Trias, who's the architect that was the plaza that the plaza was dedicated to. And when Barcelona started to expand out, that Eixample, the expansion of Barcelona, big gridded streets that you'll see around here, it started to get closer to some of these other villages, and Gracia was one of those. So like I said, in 1897, Gracia was incorporated into Barcelona, and now part of the city. One of the nicer parts, more residential, so we'll see a little bit more of apartment buildings around here as we're walking through. Really nice bars and the plazas are great places for everybody to meet up, have a drink and enjoy the outside. In the last couple years, Gracia has become a little bit more known in terms of tourism, so you'll see more people here now. Uh, a few years ago, you might not see as many tourists in here, but Gracia is probably best known for its festivals that are every year in August, starting on the 15th, right around the ascension of Mary to heaven. They have incredible, incredible street festivals where even what we're on right now, Providencia, uh, are, are going to be just decked out. And they have anywhere from you know, 20 to 30 streets at times getting decorated. All the citizens, all of the neighbors, they come together and they pick some sort of theme. Those themes are kept secret, basically. Nobody knows what they're going to be until just days before. And they really start to decorate the, uh, the streets. And it's really something to see. People come from all over to check out the different themes and they have a competition to see who has the best one, the best decoration, uh, best ideas, all sorts of different little awards that are given out. And it is something you really, really do want to see. It lasts for about a week over here and it's probably the biggest of all the festivals in Barcelona that is. When you walk around, you can find all these little shops, like I said before, that we'll start to get into when we get into some of them, the main streets in Gracia. Also, little chapels like you can see behind me. And where we're gonna go now is actually to the Plaza Virreina, to the Vice Queen Plaza, which is my personal favorite in Gracia. Always has been. Um, and there's really, I don't know, I wouldn't say anything 
too special about it. It does have the church inside, St. Saint, Saint John's Church. Um, but the plaza, I just think, is really nice. It's really kind of tranquil, nice place to sit out. You can see the church just right behind me over here. And the name of the plaza comes from that vice queen who is actually a lady married to the vice Roy of Peru. And the Viceroy of Peru was much, much older than her. And he actually had a palace built for them to live in, and this would have been their summer home. Gracia, a lot of times, was a place where people would have their summer homes. And this house was supposed to be built here for him. And when he died, before it was done, both the palace on La Rambla and the summer house out here were changed not to the Viceroy, but to the Vice Queen. And so you can see the St. John's Church right here, which it's turned into. But the name, the Plaza del Virreina, has always stuck. And so you can see around to all the different restaurants. Some of the ones I like to hang out at are just right back over here. The church is closed today. So we won't go in, but we'll head over now outside of the Vice Queen's Plaza. There's another one, Diamond Plaza, Plaza del Diamant. And one of the nice things about all the plazas is they have some stories behind them. During those festivals, I'll do a tour in and around the streets. And I'll take people through the different streets to see the decorations but also trying to hit up each of the different plazas, kind of like what we're doing right now. And you can tell little stories from those plazas. You'll notice it kind of feels like a different town as well still. We'll get back on the street in just a minute. Verdi, which is the big street that runs down the center of Gracia, basically. We're making our way up into Diamond Plaza, which has a very famous book written with the same name. One of the most famous books, kind of in Catalan literature, and it was the first book written from a woman's perspective during the Civil War, and that's one of the reasons that it got so popular. In English, the book is not Diamond Square, but it's actually a time of doves. So if you're looking to check that out, you can. You can see behind me, there's a statue built for that book, and the idea of the main protagonist and really her story during the Civil War is her Husband goes off to fight and kind of what she has to deal with over here. And one of the coolest things in the plaza, now right over here behind me, is a bomb shelter. And during the Civil War, there were hundreds of bomb shelters all over the city. One of them found right here. They actually know where a lot more are, but this is one that's open. And you can go in there, you have to make a reservation, but you can go in there, you can do a tour just down below. And it's a really cool experience. There's another one over by Monjuic that I've been into, massive inside of the mountain. And it's really interesting to see what would happen when the air raids started, when Mussolini, the Italian Air Force, were coming over Barcelona, where these people would go and what, what the conditions would be. And you can see that right in there. We'll make our way back down Verdi. And like I said before, it's the main drag. You've got a lot of different restaurants, all sorts of different food, nice little bars, and a lot of different shops as well. Uh -huh. 
One of my favorite places here is Dio. And they've got some really nice wine selections and a lot of different tapas over there. And probably the most famous thing here on the street are the Verdi cinemas. You can see just right there, you've got all sorts of different titles and things. And I said when a lot of kind of problems were going on on the street, one of the big things that they did was they changed to the original version movies. So you can go and you can actually see if they're originally in English, you can see original language versions right over there. And that really kind of saved the entire street. A lot of the other commerce really jumped off the fact that this is where a lot of people were coming to see the, the, the original movies. Other side of the street, you've got your candy store, another great bar, Latrini, right back there. And then you'll notice as we go down, making our way to the next plaza up the way, Revolution Square, by all sorts of different little shops. Crossing La Perla Street, which is another one that gets really decked up for the festivals. Obviously this year we didn't have those festivals at the same level, didn't want everybody getting together. It was something that a lot of people were looking forward to. Nice bookshop right back there. it's pretty quiet right now as well and it's right at that lunchtime so a lot of people are gonna be either sitting down for lunch or making their way over there maybe not as many people walking around today getting into Revolution Square and passing one of the best bars in the neighborhood Canigo really nice atmosphere in there, you can see the plaza, the revolution, just from 1868, back when you had really the first revolution, first democracy that was set up. And you have some different bars over here as well. And we'll head down some more of these side streets over here. Got a car coming in. So because it's a little later today, like I said, it's right around lunchtime. You've got not the siesta that everybody always hears about coming in, but you still have a lot of shops that are going to close down during those lunch hours. And usually you'll see maybe from 1.30 to 4, 4.30, a lot of these places are gonna close down. In the center, you don't seem to notice it as much because usually you have all the tourism coming in, so the shops wanna stay open. But places like this, you know, kinda of feel like their own towns, they're still gonna close down around those, those lunchtime hours. Coming up on one of the streets, Torrent de la Olla. A gelato place. And we're gonna cut into the next plaza here, which is Plaza del Sol. And this is probably the most famous or well-known plazas in Gracia, where everybody comes to meet up. Again, nice little bars all around. And a lot of people usually just come and they hang out and a lot of people just sit down in the plaza. So we got some music going on today. Let's 
see everybody around here. One of our famous bars, Sol Lanit, behind me. And then you got everybody listening to the music. And it looks like a few less tables today are out. Back behind me here. You should have a few more tables over here. It's really hard to find a table most days. Because like I said, this is one of the most famous plazas. And there used to be, and why the name is Sol is there used to be an astrolobe in here that was built. And so everything around here, all the different bars, they have that name that has something to usually do with Sol, one of the streets. The street we came in on is actually Planeta, Planet. And you've got the park for the kids out here, which a lot of times you'll see in the afternoon the police out here so that there's not a lot of people gathering sitting in the plaza like you can see right back out here while the kids are around. And one of the nice bodegas right behind me, Bodega del Sol. It's got a lot of different offers, a lot of different craft beers, and a lot of people will go in there. Instead of sitting at a table, they might grab a drink and come and sit out in the plaza. see a lot of these buildings with more of the decoration out here as well. I remember, like I said, that this was an old city. A lot of times people had their, their second residences out here. There's actually even just a couple streets over the Casa Vicente built by Gaudi, which was his first house that was built in the city. And that's really something to check out. If you haven't done so, you should check out my video going inside the Casa Vicente and see what that was like. But that was built for one of the wealthier families at the time, the Vicente family, uh, who Manel Vicente was a stockbroker and he wanted to have his second residence out here. Spectacular, spectacular house. We're making our way into another one of the famous plazas here. This is Villa de Gracia. You can see a lot of people out here. And we'll get in a little bit closer to check it out. But this is where the old city hall was for Gracia. And it was a different town. <laughs> Got some people enjoying some drinks, some tapas, and you've got in the very center, what we're walking by right here, I don't think we saw because of the trees back there, but you've got the famous bell tower. And this is very famous from when the wars with Cuba were going on and the militia came in to try to recruit a lot of the young people from Gracia. A lot of the moms, a lot of the parents didn't want their kids going over to die in these wars. And so when this area was being attacked, I actually say that for about six days, this bell was being rung while these bombardments were coming in to Gracia just to make sure that everybody knew what was going on and that they never stopped despite all of that bombardment going, going on. And so the, the, the bell tower there, you can see up to the top, has become very, very famous. And obviously, it's another one of those places where you can come and meet up with everybody. It's a very easy place to find. And like I said before, you've got the city hall, the old city hall right there. So the plaza, or the square of the Villa de Gracia, and that's what it was known as, still referred to a lot today. That's what it was known as before it was part of Barcelona.
see some of these other famous famous streets right here Mozart which is another one that gets really decked up two years ago for the festivals they made the library at night where basically everything came alive after midnight and that was really cool to check out and those are some of the main plazas and some of those back streets there's a lot more to explore. We'll have to do that in another video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know with a comment below what you thought or if there's other places in Barcelona that you wanna see. I hope you liked it. Give it that thumbs up if you did and you haven't subscribed already. Make sure you do that so you can see some more of these videos that are coming out as I'm trying to bring Barcelona to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.